A short little pass for Ryan. He'll play it back to Ferris. Healy, first receiver, switch back on the inside for Rogers. And to find a way through the middle of the ruck himself. A sloppy play, the ball. Hewitt says play on. That allows Ferris to dive through and score besides the post. But Matt Hewitt wants to make a bird of it. Have another look at this one. I think he's just checking to see whether there's going to be any interference run. And secondly, maybe even if any player was shepherded. Was a very cumbersome play, the ball. Rogers was being hung on to by the defence. Here's the put down. Oh, that's what he was looking for, in fact. Jason Ferris drops the ball over the line, I think you'll find. <laughs> I think he's just had a little peek back, too, to see on the board just how clear that was. That's dropped down. The Panthers players making their way towards the 20 metre line. They're quite convinced. It's been a great yeah. innovation, Wally, the video referee. No try, and it is. A restart from the 20, and wow. I thought for all the money in the world that Jason Ferris had scored, and I couldn't understand what Matt Hewitt was going to the video referee for. It was a terrific piece of referee. And I bet both markers are very happy that the video replay is there because that was very shoddy work around that area. Somewhere that they're falling apart. Sad one. Driven backwards. It's Pula Tua. Once again, he runs into McKenna and Long, and there's just no way through this Cronulla forward pack. Comes from the play the ball of Gaffey. Alexander takes it towards the line. Sattler double pumps it, gives it to Domic. A pass that some of the Sharks fans here in line with the pass thought was slightly forward, but Hewitt says play on. Alexander just chipping. Nothing going right for the Panthers, though. Ferris was right there to pick it up. The Sharks are doing it just oh so nicely at the moment. They lead 26 points to nil. Still 25 minutes left in this second half. Peachy from dummy half to long. What an asset he is coming off the bench. Thought about going again there, but was called on to play it by the referee. Pierce dumps it back to Healy. Now Rogers. Oh, what a pass. What a move from Eddingshausen. Kicks back on the inside. They're swarming. Here's Peachy looking for number three. Was held off it. Rogers towed it again. It was forced in the end. I think you'll find by that man there, Andrew Henson. But Matt Hewitt wants another look at it. Definitely Peachy was held off the football. Do, it was funny because the referee blew the whistle and basically called. Whether he got it down. Basically called that the Penrith player had grounded the ball. Then I thought that he uh, may have remembered in the background that E.T. had been grounded after he kicked the ball. There was a little bit of a kick and bump there. There's no way in the world that uh, the Sharks have managed to ground the ball. It's come via a Panthers player, but I think you'd have to say that the real doubt came a little bit earlier after the Sharks' skipper made contact. There's a second part of it. I don't think you can quite say that that uh, deserves a penalty try, but you can almost say that uh, it's guaranteed to be a penalty on one of those two issues. It was Brett Atkinson in 17 who made the interference play here on Peachy. There he is, grabbing him by the right arm and swinging him out of the play, and it was still there to be had. He almost got to it. It bounced off Rogers' shins and off the shoulder of Peachy once again, and Henson definitely forced the ball in the end goal, but it will be a penalty... To the Sharks, just a metre out from the Panthers' line. And they'll have it. Good. Close to the line. And there'll be no thoughts, of course, of going for a penalty goal. They'll try and rack up yet another try. It's Ferris. He'll take the tap. Ten out. Stevens just runs at Gerber and Gaffey. Elford's there as well. They still haven't put him down. Now Beckett comes in to add his weight, and he's almost across the line, held up perhaps on the first tackle. Hewitt, though, says play it. Healy at first receiver. A long pass again to Dykes. The Penrith backs rush up, trying to force him back on the inside, and they were successful in doing that. Tackle. 12 out, directly in front of the Penrith post. Healy turns it back for Long. Good tackle down low. It was Domic who made it. 
Saved the try in the first half with some good defence as well. Dykes, set play, McKenna gives it to Healy. Eddingshausen, blistering fast hands to Rogers, diving for the corner and gets there. Oh, they're turning it on. It is showtime at Shark Park, but once again we'll go to the video ref. Well, this one I think will only be there. Just to make sure. Touch and touching goal. Not too many people, I think, that had any real doubts. Certainly none of the supporters in the main grandstand here at Shark Park did. Rogers getting down just to make sure that there was going to be contact made there. A bit difficult to see where his legs were at the back. No problem with the forward right arm. There was no contact. This one will show us a little bit better whether the knees actually went over before the ball made contact. No way in the world. Chalk another four points up to the home team. There it is. The green light is flashing. The girls are dancing. And the fans, well, just listen to them. They're screaming. 30 points to nil. They might get to the half century the way they're going. Rogers, another difficult conversion attempt, but unlike his previous one in the second half, this is his favourite side as the ball will hook back towards the post. His first try of the night, he's six for the season. This is the 24th game of the season for the Sharks, but Rogers, through injury, is playing in just his 12th. From 21 metres out, and a centimetre inside the sideline. Oh, what a kick! He absolutely drilled it. The Sharks lead Penrith 32 points to nil. and that uh, Rogers came back to take part in this match. Tune up his goal kicking. Why not? A little bit of pressure. And once again, Penrith. From the mid-stripe, it's Ryan Girdler. He must be getting sick of this job. He's turning into a hiding almost for the Panthers. They don't deserve to go out in 1999 like this. The performances they've put in in recent times. Well, Penrith are uh, paying the penalty of not putting the ball carrier down. You do that from a side like Cronulla, they, they promote the ball, second phase plays and everything else. And they're the masters of open attacking football and they'll put you away and they'll embarrass you every time. And this is what the Sharks are doing. 32 points and I'll keep saying this, John Wing will be so impressed though that they've kept um, the Panthers with that duck egg. McKenna towards the halfway line. Difficult to tackle. It was Gaffey and Cross who got him eventually. And then Ferris putting the kick in. Deep inside the Penrith 20. Atkinson goes back. Got away from the captain and Ferris before E.T. comes again. Well, this is the part of the game that I think is going to interest John Lang the most. He knows that uh, his team are, are well and truly on the way to securing the minor premiership. But they've got around uh, a quarter of the game to go. He knows that they're going to have to fine-tune their defence, make sure that the communication's right, their kick and chase is very good, and that the players are playing positionally in the correct area. Sometimes there has been a little bit of a question on the edge of the ruck, just how strong that they are defensively. They haven't showed that tonight. Pula Tua goes forward. Of course, we mentioned Craig Gower leaving the field in the first half. Damaged ankle ligaments have ended his NRL season. And he'll be hoping, of course, that... They aren't severe enough to rule him out of possible selection for the Australian team in the upcoming tri-series. Peachy. Hound is tackled. About 15 on his own side of halfway. Six tries to nil. Lang. Ooh, head snaps back there as he was cuffed just around the neck and the chin. It was Scott Sattler who caught him a little bit high, and he'll be called out by Matt Hewitt. Just a bit high. Just a bit high, mate. OK. <laughs> Sattler aware of what the penalty obviously was going to be for, and Matt Hewitt wasn't too concerned about it, but here it is again. Wooshka. Right across the Adam's apple. Mm, a bit lucky. The incident not even placed on report. I'll tell you what. He'll just about be uh, really caught, uh, close to the century mark. 
Martin Lang and the wax he's copped on that chin. A brave soldier who's teamed with another tough bloke up front, Jason Stevens. They're the blokes that have been able to hit the ball up the middle, make such huge territory gains. Here he is again inside the 20 metre line. Melor, he wants a second try, getting in close to the action. A couple of tackles gone. Ferris a dummy half. Healy waits, gives it to Dykes. Outside him he finds Chris McKenna, juggled it, bobbled it, grabbed it, and has tackled about eight out from the Panthers line. Peachy to Healy, turns it back for Andrew Pearce, but John Cross from strong defence. Ferris again, fires it to Healy. It comes too straight to that man. Colin Best it was. Straight through them, a pretty average piece of defence, in fact, from the Panthers. Best, it was just a simple one-on-one -on -one tackle. Got through them so easily, and the Sharks have put on their seventh try of the game, and the Panthers really opening up here, and, well, they might reach that half-century. Yeah, and if Scotty Sattler felt bad about giving away a penalty, he's going to feel a little bit worse now. He was the man that dropped off the tackle. Wasn't too much in it. It was just a simple opportunity to make a, a tackle on his non-preferred side. He's left-handed, but it was a regulation tackle, Steve. You can't afford to drop off those. No, you can't, Wally, and you called it before with Jason Stevens and the big man. We'll see it. Great ball by Mitch Healy, too. Nice and wide there. You know, Brett Howland has come off the, off the field injured, and you see someone like Colin Best. They have an embarrassing... Um, uh, deep riches of wing talent here at the Sharks, but the Sharks, as, as you were saying before, you get the likes of Jason Stevens and Martin Lang, they get four, they get up, they play the ball quickly, and it gives the Sharks the opportunity to keep attacking. What a season Colin Best has had. Seven tries tonight for the Sharks, and all seven of them have come from members of the back line. As they say, the Sharks... Wrapped up the minor premiership, there's no doubt about that. And Rogers adds two more points to his personal tally. Look at that scoreline 38 points to nil. Not a lot of fun at the moment for the Penrith guys making their way back to the line. They've only got pride to play for. Here we are again. It's a familiar tale, a familiar spot for Ryan Girdler. He spent half his game doing this and the other half kicking it. A long, low one. Comes down to Healy who gives it off to Nathan Long. 38 points to nil. Panthers finishing their season in sorry fashion. I'll tell you what, this Cronulla side, this will be their fourth big win to round out the minor premiership. Of course, they will pick up the JJ Gilton and Shield. A trophy that still goes to the minor premiers. Oh, and there's Lang up the middle again. He's absolutely tormenting the defenders. That's his 20th hit up of the match. Ryan. To the halfway line on the last tackle 24 minutes some seconds gone in this second half atkinson back there fields it look at the line they haven't dropped off at all the sharks there were eight or nine of them up there to stop the fullbacks fullbacks progress so they'll take on brisbane next week what a game that will be one versus eight. Well, you won't fit them in here at Shark Park to see it. The Broncos. Their momentum towards the final. Slightly dying in the last couple of weeks, but they were good enough last night. And what was a terrific contest against the Bulldogs to get the points. It will be a game and a half next week. Ball bouncing up for Rogers. Tackled by a girdler. And seen... Much of the ball in attack, Ryan. He's been pretty solid in defence, though, but it's most of his work, as we said just minutes ago, coming from the halfway line, getting us back underway. Healy to Lang. More metres again. It's a tireless performance. 
He's hardly spent any time at all on the bench tonight. Millor comes into the threesome there of Panthers. Girdler refusing to let go and then he's given a little bit of what for by a Sean Ryan just lurking behind the ruck there. Stevens plays it. Comes to Healy. Looking, rubbering for Eddinghouse and getting through, but a nice piece of play from Chris Hicks. He's been good in the air tonight, saved a couple of dangerous situations with his hands in the in goal area on that occasion, went to the ground and was equally secure. Cross through Alexander. Sattler keeps it alive and it goes to Hinson. Of course, a sad way on reflection for Greg Alexander's career to finish. It was such a high last week, going out a winner at home in front of the home fans. Couldn't keep it going tonight. McNamara eventually will get to his feet and play at 30 out from the Sharks line. The Panthers really haven't looked like scoring a try tonight. Peachy was interfered with surely, and that's the way Matt Hewitt rules. It was Hopkins getting through, trying to put some pressure on Peachy, but in doing so, he interfered with the fullback, who in the end had no play on the ball. And the referee making the call there. He's an adherent. He made no attempt. I don't think he looked at the ball in the air. Probably paying a little bit too much respect for the Sharks' fullback, David Peachy. Thinking, well, I'll make sure this bloke doesn't catch it. And doing that, he might be able to beat us again. Warren and Wally, I question um, if this uh, hit out tonight is going to come back on the Sharks. They're probably their own worst enemy. They've just Their completions have been excellent, their defence has been tight, and they really haven't had a side that really tests them. Uh, and that's probably not the ideal preparation um, coming into the semi-finals. But I guess that's what I'm saying, that their own worst enemy, because they've just played a superb game of rugby league tonight. Yeah, well, it's a case while doing that. I think they've got around about, uh, what, 12 minutes coming up in the game. Wouldn't be a bad ploy from uh, coach John Lang to probably just keep kicking the ball. Tune up your defence. You know that you've got everything on board with your attack. Just make sure that you can withstand a pile of defence, even if it's 30, uh, 40 tackles coming up to around about 10 of your own. At least you're going to know that you're going to be able to muscle up in the tough time. We'll see if they do that, in fact, and keep the ball in play instead of going for the touch lines in these final 11 and a half minutes now. Healy on the last tackle. Dykes turns it back on the inside for McKenna. Flips it back, but he gave it straight back to Gaffey. Swung to the ground by Healy. Ten metres on his own side of halfway. Beckett. Had one chance tonight when Girdler hit the great pass. And here's Girdler again getting a pass in turn from Beckett. Back on the inside for Elford. Got back to his feet. Play on Alexander. Gives it. Oh, flat pass. Sattler is being lined up there by Paul Miller and could have easily been bell run. Hopkins. Just inside the Sharks 30. Greenhill. Taking it up by himself. A settler perhaps for a play here. Alexander runs it quickly to the line. Dummy went himself. Put the pass away in the tackle there. The tackle was made by Sean Ryan. Play on it is. No knock on. Girdler with a kick. Oh, Peachy does play in it. Put himself <laughs> under pressure. I thought the ball was going dead. Oh, what a play. He got it back to Dykes. He's the Messiah. <laughs> Do you think he's got a bit of confidence on board? He had no need to play it, really. The ball surely was going to go dead, but he thought, oh, let's just put it on. A bit of razzle-dazzle. <laughs> It's a sign of confidence, fellas. He's just absolutely uh, brilliant to watch David Peach. And he attributes a lot of it to his uncles up in Dubbo that all played um, first grade in the group 11 up there. So uh, they'll be very proud of him. Two in. Yeah, no doubt about the penalty Two coming up. Two men in the tackle. Two in. McNamara, the man that put the, the right hand on the ball, forcing it free. Frustration on board. Here it comes. Just ripping it out. Well, gee, it's tough times for the Panthers at the moment. They know that they've only been up around about the attacking zone, the 20 metre line, not too many times. Life a little bit more enjoyable. Martin Lang on the sideline, getting a short break. So this is probably one of the, the proudest moments in the Sharks' short history. No doubt about that. They'll celebrate long tonight. 
the Leagues Club here and around the district. Minor Premiers. And we're going to take some stopping in the finals. Stevens. 35 out from the Panthers line, of course, remembering even if they're beaten next week. Oh, the ball was lost there in the play. The ball by Stevens. So a Thanks rare much, mistake fellas. tonight. And Matt Hewitt getting a word from his touch judges. He was checking the Panthers' that defensive line point. as this ball came yep. from the grasp there of Jason Stevens. That's a very rare error. They've got up to 60. That's a little bit of a surprise. They've dropped right off, but I guess being firmly set in what you want to achieve for the rest of the game becomes a little bit harder when you're leading by 38 points. As I was saying, the performance throughout the season and of course tonight as well has given them the luxury of having two bites of the cherry even if they were to lose next week's first playoff game as now they shovel Sid Domic across the sideline. They will have the luxury of being able to back up the week after. So they'll get two goes at it, but they might not need two goes at it. Of course, if they win next week, they'll have the week off and then line up in the qualifying final the week before the grand final. Paul Phillips, Paul. Stay in back row. Healy will feed the scrum. Dykes just getting Housen outside him. Sattler again just cuffing Dykes it was this time, who he's faced a little bit of a rub and gets up and plays the ball. Slips a pass to Rogers. Got away from the tackle of Craig Greenhill. Here's Pierce again. Just with his second pass and the one tackle. Ferris a dummy half. Bypass is long, gives it straight to Jason Stevens. Quick fast play the ball. Here's Peachy at dummy half. Trying to find another hole. He gives it away to Dykes. He gives it. Back on the inside to Ferris. He slings it to Eddinghausen. He's got it behind the head. Oh, everything going right at the moment. Oh, he picked it up. Couldn't quite get it. Might have even been tackled just before he picked up the ball, but Brett Atkinson it was who made the tackle on him. I thought for a moment he was going to score a try, a similar one to a try they scored against North Sydney a couple of weeks back. Here it was. Bounced off the back of Scott Sattler. Well, he might not have had the ball in his fingertips, but it was awful close and it was real to be a knock on. Gerda plays it. And Steve, Steve Mortimer, a very emotional time on the sideline as a rare break is going to possibly open up the scoreboards. Atkinson it was making the long bus and they track him down. Colin Best it was who picked him up, but they're 20 metres out from the Sharks line. Elford to Henson. For only the second or third occasion in the game, the Panthers make a line break, and they're in close range. Here's Hicks, tracking sideways. Comes to Sattler. He dummy. He put on a little bit of a shimmy as well and almost got to the line. Girdler's a dummy half. He'll try and crash over. He will. The markers. Went to sleep there, close to the line. They won't be happy that they've given up a try after 74 minutes of play, but Penrith eventually score a try. A wry smile on the face of Greg Alexander, who has come from the field and got a terrific hand as well from the fans here at Shark Park. It was a terrific ovation for a player who has done so much in the game, and here's the break once again by Atkinson. Yeah, a little bit of a lazy defence on the inside. Jason Stevens simply running out of left hand. That was what I was trying to mention to Steve Mortimer, an emotional part on the sideline. Perhaps it spurred his teammates onto a little bit of bigger and better things. Some lazy defence there. I don't think they'd be real happy. Coach John Lang with his team, Pierce and, uh, and Nathan Long with it. Park will take a break. The scoreline, 38 points to six. Action back underway. Came down to John Cross, who gives it off to Hicks. The Panthers finally get one on the board. Took them a long time to get there, 74 minutes. And they'll go down swinging here. They spread it wide as Tony Pulitua jailed it. Elford from dummy half. Wrapped up by Eddingshausen. Just thinking Wally with only a couple of minutes to go was probably apt that 
Ryan Girdler did score that try after that great break by Brett Atkinson because Girdler by far has been Penrith's most uh, outstanding player in the 1999 season. McNamara plays it back to Cross. Girdler grubbering for himself. Oh, he's got in a collision there, a tangle in fact with the referee Matt Hewitt. As Howland came across to clean it up, Girdler was a chance of perhaps almost getting there until he ran into the lime green jumpered Matt Hewitt. That's two. McKenna plays it back to Rogers. Here's Lang back out there after having a breather for a few minutes. Into Panthers territory of their last attacking chances in the game. Ryan, very solid throughout. And he'll play it on the Panthers 40. Healy. Dykes grubbers himself looking for Howland. Atkinson. And a good job at fullbacks. It's coming onto the field in place of Shane Elford, who's moved into the back line, of course, with the reshuffle. Tony Puller, too, are getting Harris sideways there by Healy as the rain really starts to fall down at Shark Park now. So it has sent some of the fans scurrying. They were hoping to stick around and celebrate this minor premiership victory. But the big lead, they've taken the luxury of heading for the cars, but they might not make it to the cars in time because it's pouring down here at Cronulla now. Where did the rain come from? It's almost torrential suddenly. Hinson. Just sort of the halfway line. Greenhill. It's an early shower for everybody tonight. Just over 90 seconds left here. And the Sharks will run their record to 18 wins and 6 losses for the season. What a year they've had. And they're hoping to cap it all off, of course, with their first ever Premiership in first grade. Bikes has it. And the turnover there. Sloppy piece of play from the Panthers to give them possession. And then likewise for the Sharks as the pass didn't find the hands and the game with the rain falling down, grinding to something of a halt here. It has been decided well before this. In fact, the 22 mil at half time, I think the game was won easily in those first 40 minutes. More so the last 15 minutes of that first half. Lang running it just as strongly as he was at the start of the game. Healy will kick. Looking for the in goal. The ball bounces up. Atkinson having a little look over the shoulder. Wraps it up. Well inside the last minute now. Good luck. Kicking. Will be his last kick in 1999. I'll tell you what, he's found it. Robbie Beckett getting through. Unluckily, with the kick off the instep because had he got a good one away, he might have beaten everybody. There were a few chases there for the Sharks. Howland was one of them. Oh, I think he might have, have had the pace it. to have our booting to the line. Kicking soap's not easy. Rogers to Mellor. Trying to get around Andrew Henson. Won't do so. And that will wrap it up. The full-time siren sounds at Cronulla are the NRL minor premiers for 1999. Are they on the verge of making history here? 38 points to six, the final scoreline.